I've been teaching for literally, this is my 44th year doing this. And in those 44 years, I've worked in 150 countries around the world. Not all 195, but 150. And I've worked with people from every country, obviously. I've seen every culture. One of the things that you start seeing when you're around people that much, and you have all these experiences, you start seeing these patterns. And one of the most important patterns is, frankly, the energy you have. So right now, you're in your homes, and like, you know, when we first started this, I did this last July, and I, I had this experience, probably like many of you. And I got to tell you, I didn't deal with it well. I don't want you to think I'm some superhuman, and I was just like, oh, this is easy. It wasn't like that at all. This is my mission. I got all these companies. That's one thing. But this work is what I live for. It's what I've made for. And when all of a sudden, I remember I had this big birthday party for my 60th birthday, and I said, I don't want to party. And then I got everybody to agree that we'd make a party to raise money for Underground Railroad, which is one of my favorite charities. It saves children. And, you know, right now we have more children enslaved around the world than any time in history. It's insane. That's if it was your child. So we raised 14 million. I added 5 million. It was quite a birthday. And I was like, wow, 19 million bucks. We're going to save 25,000 children's lives. Children that are praying right now that someone's going to rescue them and their prayers are going to be heard. And I was just overwhelmed with so much joy and, and grace tears. And the next day, in the middle of this high, somebody called me up and said, hey, are you going to cancel your Unleash the Power Within event up in San Francisco, up in San Jose? And I was like, last year I was in Australia. I got mercury poisoning. It burned a hole in my esophagus. I lost a third of my blood supply. I almost died. And the doctor says, you're here for four days. I said, I'm in the middle of the seminar. I'm going. He goes, you can't go. I said, you can't keep me here. So we finally made a deal. I got a wheelchair and I finished my seminar there in Australia. That's how committed I am, so you get a sense. I said, cancel an event, are you insane? And then two days later, the California state government said, nothing more than 100 people, and we had 12,500 people there. And so we had to cancel. Then all of a sudden they canceled us in Amsterdam, and in London, and in Sydney, Australia. Literally all over the earth it started happening. So what do you do when everything you believe in, everything you're about, everything in your family is suddenly is disrupted? Well. A lot of people just get really, really pain, a lot of pain in their body. In fact, if you know anything about death, there's these cycles of how to deal with death that people describe, the pe stages that are pretty universal. And as I look back on it now, I can see how I went through those stages, and I'm wondering if you did. The first stage when you have a deep loss, like when there's a death, when something ends, the first one is just shock. Like, what? Someone's like, are you kidding me? That's not possible. And that's what happened when they called and said, we're canceling all events around the world, everything you do. People need me the most now. I got the tools. It's not ego. I know I can help because I've done it for 44 years in 150 countries. It's like, these people need this now and they're going to keep me from doing this. It's insane. So first there was just shock. Then the second stage you usually go to is anger or frustration. And I was like, so frustrated. How many can relate? How many went through some of these stages yourself? Total shock when they told you you're going to send your kids home, going to keep you home, shut down your restaurant. What? Right? And then anger, and then what happens? Out of the anger, you, you, you can't solve it, so now you start to bargain. Some of you bargain with God. When I was bargaining with God, I was bargaining with governors in other states saying, Vegas, we'll go to Vegas. We'll just move everything to Vegas. They're never going to shut down Vegas. And they shut down Las Vegas. We'll go to Texas. Texas is its own country in America, practically. They're never going to shut it down. The governor says, we'll never shut it down. I see some Texans out there smiling, right? And so, but he shut it down. It's like, okay, we can't do it any place in the world. Fine. They won't let us do more than 30 people at that point. It was 30 to 50, and then he kept shrinking it. We'll do it in movie theaters. I'll get a thousand movie theaters, right? And we'll put like, you know, 20 people in each one. We'll get 20,000 people. And then they shut down movie theaters. Then they said to me, uh, all right, we're going to go to churches. They're not going to shut down churches. You can't do that. You can't have Costco be open and close a church. But they did. So then I was left with, what do you do? Well, I could give up. I'm not about to do that. The bargaining didn't work. So then I went through the next stage, sadness. How many went through a place of sadness or even almost a feeling of depression? Raise your hand. So you go through that stage and it's like, oh my God, it's a sense of loss. It's a sense of sadness. It's like, oh my God, the world is the world as we know it over. And the only way you get out of that, and it's not it's not part of being an achiever. Most of us out there, how many of you consider yourself to be an achiever? Part of your identity is I find a way, I make shit happen. Look at almost everybody, right? Well, if you're an achiever, you don't just accept things. And so, but the problem is, there's a formula for, for suffering. Not for stress, but for suffering. And that formula is, you get some massive stress that comes in that you can't control, 
and then you fight it. The more you fight it, the more stress you have. You have to step into a different mode that's not part of most of us are on this, this virtual room we're doing this in together. And that is you got to accept it. Not accept that it's right or it's fair, but accept it is what it is and i got to deal with it. There's a lot of people that are just a something. There's very few people that are the something. Okay. So when, I, when people introduce myself as a trainer, I'm like, no, I'm not a trainer. I'm the trainer. It's a huge difference. So self-doubt, worry, procrastination, overthinking, analysis paralysis, fear, those are all thinking patterns that are habits. One of the most important things that I want people to understand is that you're actually not a worrier. You have a habit of a big difference. You're not a procrastinator. You have a habit of procrastinating. Big difference. Every one of those behavior patterns and thinking patterns can actually be interrupted and replaced using science. You can use a simple trick. The moment you feel yourself hesitate, the moment you've got one of those moments where you know that you need to, this is that moment that Lewis talks to you about where you got to step outside of your comfort zone and you've got to lean into your passion and you've got to really take some risks and you've got to feel the fear and you've got to do it anyway. That's the moment where you just woke up and now you've got a decision to make. Are you going to drift back into the habits or are you going to awaken your prefrontal cortex and drive forward and focus and do something new? Success does not require you to look out the window. It only requires that you look in the mirror. To be successful, you don't have to look out the window and, oh, where is my help? Where are the people that I need? All you got to do is stop, look directly in the mirror, and the one person you need to blow up, the one person you need to be successful is looking right back at you. And if you're willing to make a commitment to that person in the mirror, if you're willing to look at that person in the mirror and say, I'll make a commitment to you, from this day forward, that whatever it takes, I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it is you want to accomplish or whatever it is you want to do, you literally have to see it first. If you're not trying to get out of your shitty situation, then every day you're choosing to stay in it. And you can't complain about being given the choice you keep making. You know, I, I, one of my favorite quotes is, um, Change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of making a change. You know what's so funny? We want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. You gotta know what you're good at, you gotta know what you're marginal at, and you gotta know what you're stuck at. And you've gotta find people who complement your skill. You gotta know what type of thinker you are. You gotta know how you work, you know? And once you start to understand who you are, then you can start finding places where you'll be successful and you won't be you won't be lying to yourself. You can have any habit you want to have. You can be you can be lazy, you can be prompt, you can be you can be late, you can be honest, you can cut corners. I mean you have all these choices. And those are choices for you to make. Nobody else is gonna make them for you. And I would suggest that you play this little game with me too. Uh, think about the person you would most like to be in life. Maybe it's one of your contemporaries, maybe it's somebody a little older, but pick out the person you admire the most, the person that you'd change places with if you could. And then write down why you admire them. Just put it on a piece of paper. And then figure out the person that you would least like to change places with you, who really turns you off, who you find repulsive. And list the reasons why that person turns you off so much. And then look at that list. And you'll find that everything on the left-hand side, what you admire in other people,
qualities they bring to life. You'll find those are things you can do yourself. It's very simple. You got to apply yourself, but the habits you form in doing that early on will carry you through life. If you do that, two or three years from now, if you go through the same exercise, you'll find out that the person you admire the most is yourself. You have only one life, so don't waste it. I was a big dreamer, you know, and so uh, my job was to clean these seven floors between Friday and Sunday. So every time I would go to the, the seventh floor was the CEO's office. So I would bust in like I was the CEO. I'm dreaming like I'm the CEO now. And who would have ever thought I've been blessed? And here I am. I am the CEO of my own company. Well, I think that the, the number one thing is you have to have a very clear vision, a very clear goal of where you want to go. Because only then you will get there. have the best airplane or the best ship in the world but if the captain doesn't know where to go he will just drift around if the pilot does not know where to go he will just drift around with his plane so it's I think the key thing is that we know where we are going and that you're very passionate about that you see it always in front of you the goal to thrive in whatever you do please understand your terrain know what your target is don't guess it be as clued up as the next man, because that's 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 your petrol, that's your, your 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 fuel to get you moving. If you don't know where you're going, what your targets are, you're never going to get there. Period. And the other thing that's important is is that you got to shoot for the top. You got to go and really have big goals and think big, because then you're going to get big. Then you're going to go and achieve big things. That is the most important thing. You know, we don't achieve big things by accident.